something is happening to Carmela. She's having like a seizure or something. It's okay, girl. It's okay. It's okay. Shh. Yeah. It's okay, Carmela. It's okay, girl. It's okay. When I saw Carmela having seizures, I freaked out. I went online. I started reading many articles about goat diseases, and I acted right away. Here's what I did. This is my personal experience, and I'm giving this to you in case you're in the same situation. This has saved Carmela from death, okay? There's two diseases that are very similar. The symptoms are the same as Carmela had. She started having seizures, she lost her balance, she stopped eating, she was very depressed, she couldn't even walk with her back legs. So there's two diseases, one is polio, which is uh, a disease in goats that happen when they have a deficiency of vitamin B1. It's very common in goats that are confined in a small area and eating most of the time grain. And the other one is, um, Listeria, listeriosis is a bacteria. Listeria is a bacteria, it's everywhere. But when the levels are higher and it gets to the animal, it could make them really sick and they could die. Goats are very fragile creatures, contrary to the popular belief. They are prey prone species with a short gestation and multiple births. So that means they have a high mortality rate unless a human uh, intervene in those situations. I recommend if you're gonna raise goats to have some knowledge and learn a little bit about their health and also to have handy some medication and supplies that you will need in case of an emergency. Ven, Carmela. Carmela. Come, girl. Look, oats. She really loves oats. Good girl, Carmela. Slowly, okay? Not too fast. Well, four days ago, I went down there to feed the goats as usual, and I noticed Carmela was apart from the herd in one corner of the run-in, and she was started to having seizures. The first thing I did was to call our friends, farmers, who have been raising goats for a long time, uh, Vera and... Bruce Martin, they're very good friends. And they told us that around the area, there's been a recall for moldy food for goats. And I remember purchasing the, these different bags of food from a local farmers about three weeks ago, because we usually purchase our feed from tractor supply. So knowing this, I got really, really concerned. And it went to my mind right away that I have to treat her for uh, listeriosis. Also, I went on Google and started reading upon um, deadly diseases for goats and I noticed there was another disease called polio or something. It's it's like a polio but in goats and this is a, the, created by the deficiency of B1 vitamin in their bodies. So right away I decided to treat Carmela for both diseases at the same time. Hey baby, how are you? How are you, Cameluchin? You feeling better? Shh, guys, girls, go. Feeling better, Cameluchi? I'm a love. See how she walks slow. She's trying to go slowly. Okay. Yesterday she wasn't she wasn't able to do that. See, she's eating some of the hay. She went to the hay rack and she's eating by herself, which is good. A lot of flies today.
fresh water girl. Good job. For the B vitamin, I gave Carmela five cc's three times a day for the first two days. The recommended dose is five cc's per 100 pound of animal. She's 130, 100 pounds, alpine goat female. So I gave her three times a day for the first two days. And, and after that, I started giving twice a day. I'm still giving this to her because today is the fourth day. So B1 vitamin injectable, five cc's per 100 pound of animal. And don't worry in giving extra to your animal. It's not gonna harm them. This is B vitamin. So the animal, if it has extra in their body, they're gonna eliminate it through their urine and it's not gonna harm them just for you to know. The other medication is the antibiotic, penicillin, okay, injectable as well. The recommended dose is two cc's per 100 pound of animal, but in this case, you're gonna start an aggressive treatment at the beginning for the first two days um, because this is a very serious um, infection. So I gave her four cc's, two cc's in the morning and two cc's at night. And then I'm still giving her two cc's every day for the next four days. So a total of a week of antibiotic. If you call a bed, most beds, they don't accept big animals. They don't see like cows and horses and goats and sheep. They only see, you know, the common thing, cats and dogs. I used to have birds before and to bring a conure to a bed office was a problem, even though with birds is a problem. So, by the time you are able to contact a bed and they come to your farm, which is really expensive, or you go to them with a goat, which is travel too, because you're gonna need a truck. That's a hundred pound animal, very strong, that is very difficult to transport to a vet office. Anyways, it gets too complicated and you don't have time between all that because the saving time is between 24 and 48 hours that you can act quick and save your animal. So I hope this information gets to you in case you need it, in case you have an emergency like I did, and hopefully you won't, but it's something inevitable in a farm. Animals will get sick um, from time to time, and all you need to do is to learn a little bit about it, have some knowledge, and have some supplies that you can use in those cases. So hope you enjoyed this episode and I'll see you in my next one. Bye bye!